Today on this 2018 Jeep JL Wrangler Unlimited, I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to install the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller. To install this, we're also going to need eTrailer's Universal Trailer Brake Controller Wiring Kit. Now this is going to let you use your trailer brakes, whether they're electric or hydraulic, you can switch between the two. Now that's a good thing because you won't have to use your brakes on your Jeep to do all the stopping. Now this is a proportional brake controller, which that means the harder you hit the brakes in your Jeep, the more your trailer brakes are going to be applied. That way it eliminates all that jerky stopping motion. Also, if you need to, there is a manual override switch. You simply push it that way, and that'll activate your trailer brakes by themselves. So if we hit these up and down buttons on the side, it allows us to adjust our power output to our brakes, all the way from 14, everything in between, down to zero. Now zero would be, you don't want any power to your brakes, 14 would mean you want full power. Now you typically increase this number with the heavier your trailer gets. So it's a good rule of thumb to set it right before your trailer brakes lock up. Overall, this brake controller is going to help you travel more safely, more reliably, and keep less wear and tear off not only your Jeep, but any trailer you might have as well. Now to begin our install, we're going to mount up our seven way plug and bracket. Now this bracket is included in the kit. We're wanting to put it about right, right in here somewhere. But as you can see, if we were to mount it right here, the cap would actually make contact with the bumper and it'd just be a little too tight to easily get your seven way in and out of there. So what we're going to do to correct that issue is use an extra bracket, which you can pick up on eTrailer.com. So how this is gonna work, I'm going to mount that bracket up there, and then with our included one, that will actually connect to it about like this. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of room for your cap to fully open, and it'll be really easy to get your plug in and out. And this hardware is included. a couple screws and some lock nuts. You use a 3 8 socket to just slightly snug those up and get them tight. Now we can actually mount it and we're going to do that with this strap. We'll put it through the hole. Connect the two ends together. Now with them loosely installed and go ahead and set our bracket up exactly where we want it and get it tightened down. And now we can take our seven way wiring and fish it through there. And then we're gonna secure this to the bracket using the supplied hardware. We'll take our screw and pop a couple of them in for now. And on the back side, we will first place a flat washer, then a lock washer, and lastly, a nut. We'll do that same procedure to all four of the holes. We can take a Phillips bit and a 5 16 wrench to hold the back side and get them tightened down. All right, now we can plug in our two four-way connectors together. It's a good idea to use some dielectric grease on the terminals. If you need some, you can find some on eTrailer.com. Just kind of get some in there real good. And push the two together. Now I like to take a zip tie. and zip tie the two together just to make a more permanent connection. If you want, you can also use some electrical tape to wrap 
the whole assembly for even more protection. All right, now just to keep this up and out of our way for now, this is the additional four pole connector that's on the back of our seven way connector. So we'll just kind of mount this into place. It just slides right into that bracket just to get it out of our way. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck our four way up in between the bumper and the support. That's a good idea to get it protected in there, especially from the heat that your muffler will put off. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda bundle it up and just kinda push it up in there. And with it like that, I can take a, a long zip tie and put it up around the support and around the wires just to kind of hold them in place better. All right, now we can ground our ground wire, which is this white wire with this ring terminal on it. We're gonna use the supplied self-tapping tech screw. And we wanna find a solid piece of metal. So this bracket here is perfect for that. We kind of hold it in place and we'll take a 3-8 socket. Make sure it's tight, which it is. So now we only have three wires remaining. Just kind of for a quick overview. This yellow wire, that's actually for trailer reverse lights, which our customer requested that we don't hook this one up. If you need to, you can check your instructions. There's a diagram on there and that'll tell you how to run the yellow wire, which is once again for your reverse lights for your trailer. However, these two, we are gonna use the black wire. This is your power wire. We're gonna run that all the way up to the battery. And this blue wire, this is for your brake controller. So we're gonna run a wire from here all the way up to the front where we're going to be installing our brake controller. I went ahead and taped up the yellow wire to our wire loom just to keep it out of the way. And now we can hook up our wires to our wires that we got with the kit. Now the black wire coming from the seven way plug is going to be attached to the black wire from the length of wire included in our kit and the blue will go to the white. Now these do come with butt connectors however we like to use heat shrink butt connectors because it will be outside it just protects it a little bit better so if you want some of these you can find them on eTrailer.com. To do that it's really easy just push it over the wire Take some crimpers. We'll take our other black wire and pop that in the other end. And do the same thing. Make sure they're in there nice and tight, which they are. Now we can do that to our blue and white wire. All right, now we can use a heat source to shrink the heat shrink and make a nice good seal. We're gonna be using a heat gun. You can find one of these on eTrailer.com if you need one. I'll show you how we ran our main wires all the way up to the front. And here underneath this wire loom was our connection points that we connected earlier. The blue and the black wire and the black and the white wire. So I kind of put this wire loom that's included in the kit and zip tied it out of the way. Now we actually ran the majority of the wire through the frame itself. Now what really helped us do that was a fish wire. Now I happen to use a plastic piece of airline and you can use a coat hanger or something that has a little rigidity but is flexible at the same time to help you fish these wires through the frame. So what I did was the wires were ran into this hole back here. Actually came all the way through. Now keep in mind these are inside of the frame. And it came out right here. I went ahead and zip tied it to the brake lines nice and tight just to keep it as far away from the exhaust as possible. Kind of ran it up and over and up the firewall. 
Now here's the wire that we ran up through the firewall. Now the black wire inside of this gray sheath, the black wire will go over to the battery and the white wire will go inside of the cab. Well right here next to the brake booster there's actually a plastic grommet which you can remove that and drill a hole through it and run your white wire into the cab. Now since the battery is on the other side and we have to run the black wire to it, we did have to cut that gray sheath back and remove it so we could split the two wires up. With the white wire inside the cab, we ran our black wire all the way across the top of the firewall along the cowl and over to the battery. So now we need to find a spot to mount our 40 amp breaker, which will be connected to the black wire that we ran across the cowl. And then we'll run another wire from the other side of the breaker to the positive side of the terminal. But first we need to find a good spot to mount it. The best spot that I found is right along here like that. You just want it to be secure and you want to make sure whatever you're drilling into there's nothing behind it. We'll take some of our provided screws, these self-tapping tech screws. This might be a little tricky here because it is pretty thick metal so just be patient and take your time. Now with our solenoid mounted in place we can take our wire and just kind of route it around to where we like it and roughly measure it. Now the one that's along the cow that'll get connected to the gold post. So about right there, go ahead and cut it. We can strip it back. Then we will actually use a small ring terminal that's included with the kit. Get it crimped down. All right, well this is what our wire that we made looks like. As I said, we put our ring terminals on it. This will get connected to the positive side of the battery, but we'll wait to do that last just so the system doesn't have power until the very end. But as I said, the short wire that goes directly to the battery will go on the silver post on your breaker. And the one that was ran from the back along the cowl will go to the gold post. So once we got them kind of where we want them, we can go ahead and tighten them down. And we'll just use a regular wrench to do that, which is 3 eighths in size. We can focus on hooking up our brake controller itself. Now we're, the first thing we're going to do is mount our 20 amp breaker to the Jeep here in practically the same location we did the other one. So we'll use our supplied self-tapping tech screws to do that. Now with our 20 amp breaker installed, we can run our wiring from the battery area to inside of the cab. We're going to do that with the 10 foot wiring extension that you can find on eTrailer.com. All right, so here's how I ran my wires the wires that came out of the gray sheath. The black one went to this 20 amp circuit breaker and we used the gold post on the bottom of the breaker. We then took some extra black wire and cut it to length and using a supplied ring terminal on both ends, we then put that on the silver post on the breaker. And this will actually run over to the positive side of the battery terminal. Now the white wire that was in the gray sheath, we just ran that down and up along the side of the battery here and using a supplied ring terminal, that will get connected to the negative side of the battery. Now these wires will go into the cab of our Jeep and I'll show you how I did that. If you follow the gray sheath, down next to the brake booster and down just a couple inches from the brake booster there's actually a plastic grommet. We drilled the hole through it and ran our wires in through that grommet right into the cab.
All right, now here's where our wires came through the grommet on the firewall into our cab. Now we can focus on hooking up our brake controller wiring. And to do that, we'll first start with the single white wire. To do that, we'll start with our single white wire that we have. So we'll go ahead and strip that back. Now the single white one, this comes from our seven pole connector in back. This will get connected to the blue wire from our brake controller wiring harness. And to connect those, we will use a butt connector. Now these do come included with our kit. All right, now we can connect our single white wire that is coming into the cab from outside of the Jeep from the firewall to our blue wire that's coming off of our brake controller plug. We'll do that by using a butt connector that's supplied with the kit. Get that crimp down and slide our blue wire into it. Get them nice and tight. Go ahead and tug on them to make sure they're secure. Right now we can work on the wires inside of our gray sheath. So we need to expose those so we can work with them. So I just got a razor blade. Be very careful while you're doing this, but just puncture the center lightly and slightly pull it down. Always cut away from you. And you won't need but a, but a few inches like this to work with. We can go ahead and strip those back. Those will get connected to the white and black wires off of our brake controller. White will go to white and black will go to black. So we'll kind of strip these a little bit more. All right, now we can use our buck connectors and do it the same way that we connected the other wire. Now the only wire left to hook up is the red wire, and that's going to be for our brake signal. Now this plug is underneath the dash connected to the brake pedal. This is where we're going to hook our red wire to. Now there's three wires going to this plug, and they're numbered 1, 2, and 3. The wire that we want, as you can see, there is a red pen sticking in, and I just put that there so it's easier to see. The wire is green and brown and on the clip itself, there's a number three. That's the wire that we're wanting to tap into. Now, since it's way underneath the dash and it's gonna be difficult for me to physically show me doing this to connect the red wire to that green and brown wire that we need, I'll demonstrate it here. We're going to connect our red wire from our brake controller to the green and brown one under the dash by a quick splice. Now, the way these work is they have two holes and a splice that's sticking out. So what you're gonna do is take your red wire from your brake controller and slide it in like so. And for demonstration purposes, we'll say this white wire is our brake signal wire that we need to connect to under the dash. So you'll put this one in the hole next to it. And when you have both wires in there, make sure they're in both holes properly. You're just gonna take a pair of pliers and push this tab down and that'll actually sit flush and sandwich the two wires and splice into them. And then when this is flush with the plastic, you can fold the lid and that'll complete your connection. I slid our quick splice over our wire that we're wanting to connect to. And from the bottom, I will run our red wire from our brake controller. into the other slot like that. Just try to make sure it's in there nice and good and straight. The way we make a good connection. Now we're ready to take some pliers and push down this metal quick splice. You want this splice to go down nice and evenly. It can be tricky because it's so tight back here, but just take your time, you'll get it. Like that. 
we can close the cap and we should be all good. All right, so now we can actually mount our brake controller itself. Now this part's kind of up to, up to you, kind of your personal preference. Typically, you would go above the gas pedal, above your right knee, somewhere in this area. We're probably gonna go about right here underneath this hole. The only thing you have to keep in mind is after you mount it, make sure to give yourself enough room to get in on the side and get the screws in that will actually hold the brake controller up. So now we can take our bracket and once you've picked a good spot, we're gonna go about right here. It's a good idea too to make sure that there's nothing behind what you're drilling into. It could save you a lot of headache down the road. So we're gonna go about right there. And using the supplied screws, go ahead and secure the bracket. Trying to make sure it's nice and straight so it looks good. Like that. Now we can take our brake controller and two more of the supplied screws. Pop it up in there. And you can go ahead and snug them up. All right, now with our bracket mounted up and our wiring done, we can plug it in. You'll hear it clip. Set that back into our bracket. And then we can use some zip ties and some electrical tape just to clean up any excess wire we might have hanging down underneath the dash. All right, now back up here underneath the hood, we need to hook up all of our cables going to our batteries and to our breaker. Now, once again, the silver post on our breaker will be for our wire that's going directly to our positive terminal. The bottom one, or the gold post, that'll be the wire that came from our gray sheath. So we'll get those hooked up. Let's we'll start with the bottom. And the top one. All right, now we can hook our white wire up to our ground. We'll go right here and we'll loosen it with a 10 millimeter. Our ground over it and tighten it back down. Okay, now the last thing that we need to do is hook up both of our power wires coming from our breakers. So we go ahead and loosen up this nut with a 10 millimeter on the positive side of the battery. Be careful not to lose it. We'll attach our ring terminals and get it all snug back down. Now if you have a tester, go ahead and hook it up just to make sure everything is working properly. That'll do it for our look at and install of the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller on this 2018 Jeep JL Wrangler Unlimited.